like a bell cut. Playing territory is time. Hey there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to an introduction to Clan Territories. Yes, Clan Territories is open, and everybody is freaking out just a little bit, but it's all right because Efficacious Hustle is here to help you through it all. We've got two brand new ancient sets that just came into the game with Clan Territories that we're going to be talking about, and the big one on everybody's mind is those big old bosses. Yeah, isn't he pretty? And <laughs> not at all. Uh, uh, we also have our usual 500 diamond giveaway. So stick around until the end of the video to figure out how to enter this one. Now, I know I'm a little bit late to the party and I haven't made a video. And Clan Territories just kind of came up out of nowhere. So I'm hoping that you all forgive me and enjoy this video. All right, let's talk about the town hall and some upgrade priorities. Town Hall should be right at the top of your list because without that, you're not gonna have access to anything else. Go ahead and get that Town Hall upgraded first so you can unlock things like the Hunter's Neighborhood. That's gonna be really important moving forward. And the Message Board, those quests, extremely important. When you open up the info on your Town Hall, you'll be able to see what you can get when you upgrade your Town Hall. First off, you're gonna be able to unlock these things except for some of them like the Worker's Neighborhood and the Tavern and stuff. Once you get it up a little higher, you'll be able to see what you can upgrade and to what level you can upgrade it to. You're going to want to upgrade that town hall first, that way you can get access to more upgrades. You can go ahead and upgrade your message board, or you can go ahead and construct the hunter's neighborhood. Both are extremely important to do first. Now the message board has all the quests where you can easily earn coins for doing some activities that it asks you to do. <clears throat> Small flex. Once you've completed the quest requirements, go ahead and collect your coins and put them into whatever upgrade that your clan leader decides is the most important at the time. Remember, this is an intro to clan territory, so we're not going to be selfish in spending things in the store. Next up, we have the extremely important Hunter's Neighborhood. This is where you're going to get summoning scrolls for bosses, and seriously, this is so important. At every level, you're going to get more and more bonuses, because you're going to also get more souls in Portal, more Ether for Dungeon, and more resources upon completing invasions. By hitting the yellow I button, you can see at which level you get how many dwellers to place inside the Hunter's Neighborhood. Remember, you don't get any of those bonuses or any scrolls unless you have players lodged inside the Hunter's Neighborhood. Here's a quick little tip. If you have two players, both in the Hunter's Neighborhood, running dungeon either together or with other friends, technically you're going to get double the amount of scrolls earned upon completing dungeon bosses. You'll receive 130 scrolls per boss. The Worker's Neighborhood is really similar to the Hunter's Neighborhood, and the fact that you'll be getting a new kind of resource or resources for completing things like dungeon. Besides new resources, you're also going to get a bonus to the amount of coins that you get from things like defeating bosses and completing quests on the message board. The tavern is for cooking up the goodies. Peter loves food. <laughs> so this food, when you cook it, will give a boost to different types of squad members, depending on if they're archer, mage, warrior, or it can even give a boost to all of them whoever is at the table in the tavern. And now for the selfish people and the players that are going to really piss off the clan leaders, which is the store. Now at level one, you'll see, and this is really frustrating for a lot of people, but that number at the top of the items, that's across the entire clan. So if one clan member buys one of those items, that five is going to go down to a four. It is a limited offer, literally. You can also buy the materials right now for the two new ancient sets, Frost Death and Executioner of Light, which right now is the only way that you can get those materials. Now, when it comes to summoning these bosses, they might look pretty funny, but I think all of us are starting to realize they're not so much fun to deal with at the high levels. When it comes to summoning the bosses, everything is an upward pattern. The higher the level of the boss, the higher the recommended stats that you need, the more scrolls you have to use to summon it, the more rewards you get, but the more difficult the boss becomes. 
As it is with all bosses, you get to see the monster type and details about that boss and what it does. Clicking on rewards will show you the maximum amount of coins that you can get for beating the boss, as well as what the top 5 players are going to earn, what type of chests they'll get, and what's inside for content that could be better I guess. But hey, enough with the nitpicking, why don't we go ahead and take on a boss of our own. Pumba? I think we're coming for you. With this extremely powerful squad, we're gonna just die. I really duh. Well, don't worry if you do run out of attacks because you do have the option as a leader to buy more attacks if you need to, and these get shared across the entire clan. If you buy five, everybody gets five more attacks. Make sure you talk to your actual clan leader about it though. Once your clan is finished off a of boss, you can go ahead and hit the attacker list and see who the top attackers were in your clan. For us, it was Mr. Bear or One Punch Bear. Alright everybody, that's going to wrap up our small and short intro to clan territories. There will definitely be more in the future, I'm sure, as all of us are really working hard to get things figured out between, you know, clan to clan and sharing information and trying to get certain things upgraded first. You know, um, there, there's a lot of good YouTubers out there right now. Um, you know, shout outs to all of them. We're all trying to work really hard together to come together as a community and, uh, you know, build something that all of you guys can just kind of have a reference to. All right, but now it's time for that moment at the end of the video, the diamond giveaway. Remember, the Black Friday donkey is coming this week. So make sure you get in your entries ASAP. Hey, that was actually pretty fly, huh? All right, here's how you enter. In the comment section below, I want you guys to let me know how many lives per attack can you take away from one of the bosses that your clan has summoned, whether it's one life, a hundred lives, 200 lives, or zero, like me some sometimes with like the biggest boss. Yeah, just make sure you do that and add your game ID right below it so you can be entered officially to win 500 diamonds. And big shout outs to Bell Waved AF. The clan has been super helpful in gathering up all this information and trying to get things done first. And of course, they love all of you guys in the community as well. Everybody says hello. Final shout out to my man Gavin at Gavin Gamer Gaming. Go check him out. And everybody, stay positive, test negative. Efficacious out. <laughs>